And when he had given thanks, he distributed to his disciples and the disciples to them that were sit down on and likewise to the and likewise of the fish as much as they would when they were filled he said unto the disciples gather up the fragments that remain that nothing be lost amen gather up the remain that, that nothing be lost and there but therefore they gathered them together and filled now knows what he said 12 baskets full how many disciples was it it was 12 disciples how many baskets did they take up 12 baskets full amen 12 baskets full so we see 12 is a is a is a number that God is looking at amen amen so knows now knows what it goes on to say here uh, verse number 13 it says Therefore, the, therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them, unto them that had eaten. Amen. Glory to God. So we see that faith is it, is it faith. You got to understand. You got to be willing to take that step of faith. And you got to know that people might talk about you. People might say some weird things about you. But you got to realize that you are on an assignment. And Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, Romans chapter 1 verse number 16 says, Romans chapter 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, unto everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, you know, when you begin to work, when you begin to walk on God and the word of God, and you begin to have manifestation of God's word being performed, and people begin to see the manifestation of God's word working in your life, they're going to come, they're going to they gonna, they gonna start talking about you. And not everyone's going to have something good to say about you. But you can't allow what the people say stop you from following what God has called you to do. Because, see, what they're doing, the enemy is trying to use them. They might even be your family, might even be your friend. But the enemy is trying to use them to stop faith from, from being uh, activated, trying to cause you to, they're trying to, trying, to, trying to put your faith out. You may have a, a, good, a good fire burning in your heart. And all of a sudden, one of your, you go and tell your cousin what, you, what, what God is doing in your life, then all of a sudden, they're going to look at you and gonna probably might even just cuss you out. And then all of a sudden, they done poured a cold bucket of water on your fire and put your whole fire out. Now you walk around like them. God don't want us like them. God called us out of the darkness. He called us out of darkness. We are children of the Most High God. We are a supernatural breed of people who are serving a supernatural God, a God that is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think, according to his power that worketh in us. God's ability in you is the power to carry out the assignment that he's given you. Hallelujah. Regardless of what it looked like, God's ability in you has, is the power to carry out the assignment that he's given you. You don't look at the circumstance. You don't look at what's going on around you. You keep your eyes on Jesus because he's the one that called us. He's the one that, is, he's the one that, he's the one that appointed us. People didn't call you. People didn't appoint you. People can't pay your way. If you depend on what people can do for you, then you already off you already off, 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 off the scale. If you want to stay on God's scale, then you got to do what God said do. Because when God weigh you out, you're gonna weigh you out. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna be so much better than what the world's gonna do for you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because see, God is wanting to do something supernatural in your life. God want to see: Are you willing to take? Uh, can you? How you bear up? when pressure is on how do you bear it when pressure is on amen and remember uh, uh, Je Jesus was, was, was sent to uh, Pontius Pilate he was, he, he, to be uh, by, the, by the religious people and they uh, and Peter followed behind and, and, and why he was in that being, being uh, 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 when, when, why he was in that being, being questioned and everything and so forth and so on Peter was out there warming himself and one of the dancers came, one of the women came and said, aren't you one of them that was one of, oh, no, I don't know the man. See, pressure's been put on him. Jesus told him, before the clock crowed thrice, thrice, you're going to be denied me twice. 
uh, three times. Before the, cock, before the cock crows twice, you're going to be denied me thrice. Amen. Three times. So he went, followed, but his heart still was not prepared to make a stand because he still allowed the enemy to bark, to back him down from his steadfastness. You cannot allow, I don't care what they look like, you got to keep your heart set on what God has called you to do. Amen. That's the only way you're going to be able to overcome your enemy is to keep your heart set on what God has called you to do. See, the Bible says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of, of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Amen. And so we have to understand that God is the one that's walking with us, not the world. God is the one that's walking with us. Amen. Look at Matthew chapter, Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. And let's look at verse number. Mark chapter 7. And look at verse number 31. Mark chapter 7. Verse number 31. And it says, Glory to his name. And again, and, and again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of De Decapolis, and they bring unto him one that was deaf and, and had an imperative impairment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. And he took him aside from the from the multitude and notice what he said verse number 33 he took him aside from the multitude and put his finger into his ears and spit oh my god <laughs> and spit and touched his tongue. Glory to God. Mm. Mm. Verse 34 says, And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ethata, that is, be open. And straightway, His ears was open. And the string, no, it's actually, actually we're talking about his eyes. His eyes. You. <laughs> you are a miracle about to happen. You know that? You are a miracle about to happen. I don't know if I could use spit like that. But you know what? If God tell me to, I could do it. I could do it. And I believe that whatever it takes to get the job done, as long as I obey him, it'll be carried out. Amen. It'll be carried out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, now let's look at Mark chapter 8, verse 23. Mark chapter 8, verse 23, and it says, <laughs> Mark 8, 23 says, And he took the blind man by the hand and laid him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his finger upon him, he asked him if he saw halt. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. Amen. Now, we have something that God wants to use within us. And that's his spirit that he let allow to live and reign within us. He took the blood.
blind man by the hand and led him out. What he, why did he lead him out? Because he didn't want all those unbelievers to see what he was about to do. What was he doing? He's going to take some spit. He's going to spit on the ground. He's going to stir it up. He's going to put it in his eyes. You mean that when you're going to put some spit on, you're going to put it on? That's what, that what people would think today. That's what religious people think today. But how, you know, if God want to do something supernatural, well, didn't man come from dirt? Then man, was his eyes was restored. Amen. Because of the same, because of dirt. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 1, verse 17 again. Romans 1, 17. Amen. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. See, God is calling us to live by faith. This is not something that, this is not a request. This is a lifestyle that God has called us to live, come to, to live a life of faith. Amen. If, if, it, if, if the mud and the spitter and the mud was able to open the man's eyes, then my God, let the man's eyes be open with spit and mud. Glory to God. Amen. Let his eyes be open with the spit and mud. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. And see, and see, we see that. And so it says, and so it says in Romans chapter 1, verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. See, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith grow it because your faith grow it see what happens when you begin to act out on what God has said your faith begin to grow to a place that you will have no problem in obeying God amen but why because you had an experience you have experience and then you had and you had you had results that God intended for you to have and you were and, and now you come to that place again it's no problem for you to do what God asked you to do why because you know that God is going to confirm the word God didn't say that you was going to be the one to do the miracle. God is the one that's going to perform the word. Your job is to simply obey God. That's your faith. That's your faith part is to obey God. Amen. To obey God. Now look at 1 Thessalonians chapter, first, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. Notice what it said, your faith groweth exceedingly. And the charity of every one of you all toward each other abundant, abounded. Amen. And so not only you, not only your faith growing, but see, God is blessing you. God is blessing you. He's bringing you to a place where you will experience his best. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12 says, saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, God is doing this. This is not something that man is doing. This is something God is doing. Hallelujah. My last scripture is this. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. Hallelujah. God is going to do something. God is going to do something very powerful. God is going to do something very strong. God is going to do something that's going to catch the attention of many. Amen. But you have an obligation to walk by faith, to carry out what God has said, not looking at the circumstances, but just trusting him. You see, because, see, when Abraham was called to take his son Isaac to offer him as a sacrifice, he simply obeyed God. He took a lad with them to, in, a, in, a, in a mule to haul the wood and stuff on. And he took the fire. And they took off to this journey. And they came to this foot of this mountain. And he said, y'all st stay here. Me and the lad will return. And they went up on the mountain. And he got his son and laid him down on that, on that altar that he had established drew back the blade, getting ready to take his son's life, and God saw the heart of Abraham that he was willing to carry out 
whatever he gave him to do without remorse. He drawed his hand back to carry out the assignment, and God said, Abraham, Abraham, hurt not the lad. Amen. Oh, my God. You see, now that took a lot of faith for him to carry his son and lay him down to take his life. But he was called to, he was asked of God to do so. Amen. When God asks you to do something, it may be something that is so hard. Maybe, I mean, telling you, it may be something that, that you would rather that he has asked someone else. But he didn't. He asked you. But he's expecting you to be faithful to what he's asked of you, regardless of the cost. Hallelujah. And so, as he drove back his hand to, to take the last life, God spoke to him and said, I see that you will not hold, will hold nothing from me. There's a, lamb, a ram hid in the thicket over there. Use it for your offering. You don't know where your ram is at, but you got to come to the place that you have fully obeyed God. Then your ram will be revealed. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Your provision that God has for you is connected to your obedience to what God has said to you. Hallelujah. Can you see that? Can you see that? Now in the book of Genesis chapter chapter 27 in the book of Genesis chapter 27 glory to God. Our last scripture for tonight. And I want to go to verse number 23. Genesis 27, verse number 23. And it says, And he discerned him not, because his hands were hardened. As his brother Isaac well this is the time let me just kind of give you a little uh, a little uh, commentary on this this is the this is uh, Jacob with his two with his two sons Isaac and uh, and uh, uh, he was uh, uh, Esau and Isaac Amen. And so uh, he was old, and he sent his son Esau out to get the uh, to go hunting and get him some venison, and he was going to eat it and he was going to bless him. And so his wife heard it, and she told her her son Jacob what to do. Go get me one of those baby goats, and we're going to dress it. Amen. Now notice, the blessing, once it was spoken, it was no turning back. Once the word has gone forth, once the word had, once, once the, once the blessing had went forth, Jacob knew that after his death, that word was going to come to pass. Notice what it says here now in verse number 30, verse number 23. Verse number 23. And he, and he said, Art thou my very... Uh, verse number uh, verse 23. And he, and, he, and he discerned him not because, there, because his hands were hairy. Because his hands were hairy. As, as, his, as his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it, bring it near to me. And I will eat of it, eat of thy, eat of my son venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac, and his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, as, and kiss me, my son. And he and he came near and kissed him, 
and he smelled him. See, he called him to kiss him because he wanted to make sure he was the right son. He wanted to smell it. Amen. And and uh, uh, verse 30, verse 27 again. And he said, and he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of the of the raiment and blessed him, and said, and said, see, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field which the Lord had blessed which the Lord has blessed amen now verse number 37 verse number 30 verse number 37 it says now this is this has a lot of reading to go to it let's just let's just read verse number let's just read verse number 20 28 there therefore God gave him to God gave him due of heaven because this is a blessing that this is a blessing of being pronounced. Therefore, God gave him the dew of heaven and the and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. But be Lord over over thy thy brethren and let thy thy uh, thy mother's son bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee and blessed be he that blesses thee and it shall and it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and and Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from uh, from the presence of Isaac his father and that Esau his brother came in from the from the honey and he also had made uh, savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, let my father rise and eat of, my, of, thy, of his son venison that thy soul may bless me. Amen. See, his son then went out, they went out, he went out and took the, uh, went out and killed the venison. He didn't come back in. He's ready for his blessing. He done fixed the venison for his dad. Now he went rise and, and eat and then come on and bless me and and, and his father was kind of dumbfounded because what do you mean I've just blessed you and now the son I, the Esau was he, he said but you told me but I but I just blessed you no you didn't dad I just got back so who took your blessing amen but anyway, what I'm saying is this. When the blessing came forth, he could not take it back. When the word of God goes out, it cannot return until it accomplishes what God has sent it out to accomplish. Amen. So we have to understand what God is saying here. Amen. Because the blessing that is being prepared is for the working of the supernatural. God is going to do something because we're walking by faith. We're walking in according to the Spirit of God. We're walking according to the Word of God. And God going to confirm the Word with sign Father. Now look at verse number 37. Now look at verse number 37. 37 says, And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him the Lord, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants. And with corn and wine have I uh, sustained, it, sustained him. And, and what shall I do now unto thee? my son. See, he's showing him all the things that he had gave him, but yet he still said, but God, I've done, Father, there must be something for me. The blessing had gone forth, and it will not return forth. Verse 38, and Esau said unto his father, has, has thou but one blessing? Has thou but one blessing? My father, bless me, even, my, even me also, O oh, my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Why was he weeping? Because he missed out on the blessing. And it could not, he couldn't, he, once the word gone forth, he couldn't take that word back and give it to his son. The word had already fallen on the heart of another soul. God is getting ready to do something. God is getting ready to do something. Are you ready to move with the spirit of God? Are you ready to hold your banner up high and walk? in the things that God has called you to walk in without fear, without trembling, only obeying God, walking by faith and not by sight. 
God is calling us to walk by faith. God is calling us to a walk of faith. Hallelujah. He's calling us to a walk of faith. Amen. Amen. And so God's word is full of, it's full of blessings and it's full of miracles. I am not halfway done with this message yet. So we're going to pick this message up on next time. Amen. Father, we thank you for the, your word. We thank you, Lord God, that you're preparing our hearts to go into the land that you have set before us. You're preparing us to walk into this land, Father, not looking around, not looking at the circumstances, not looking at the storm. God, you're calling us to pass over into the promised land that you have set before us. You brought us to this land, Father. And now, God, you're about to bring us to a, 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 a place of prosperity in the land that you have brought us to. The land, oh, God, yes, there are giants in the land, but, God, we are not looking at the giants. We're only looking to you, the one who have called us, the one who have set us free, the one who have brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We are your people, the sheep of your pastures, and we will follow our great shepherd. We will hear your voice in a stranger voice. We will not follow. If you say go this way, we'll go this way. If you say turn here, we'll turn here. Father, we will hear your voice, and we will follow your instructions. And we will possess this land that you have given us. No, Father, we will not look at the situation. We will not look at the giants. We will not look at the, 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 at the cost of the, the things that is around us because we are not looking to do it in our strength. We are walking by faith. We are not looking at the circumstance. We're not looking at what we can do from a natural standpoint. We are walking by faith. And we are looking to you as the author and the finisher of our faith. Hallelujah. For the just shall live by faith. This is not a request. This is a lifestyle that you've called us to. This is your command for us. And we choose to walk by faith. It's my decision today. And from this day forth, every day, will be a journey of faith right into the promised land that you have set before me. I will receive that what you have spoken to my heart. Even though it tarry, I will wait for it. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you. It's so good to, my God, to hear the word of God today. That's God speaking to our heart through his written word. Just remember that God is calling us to a lifestyle of faith. Remember Adam? That's what Adam did when he was in the Garden of Eden. He didn't have to uh, go out and work hard labor. No. But once he rebelled and did wrong, then what God has given him he turned it over to someone else which was Satan Lucifer amen God came down in the cool other day Adam Adam where are you he wasn't looking at Adam from the standpoint of him walking in the garden he was looking at the position that he had set Adam in he saw that Adam was no longer holding that position God has called us to the, God is going to restore back to us the position that he gave man from the beginning. This is why God's preparing us to walk by faith and not by sight. Are y'all ready to go in and take the land? Are you ready to take, I mean, the impossible? And because God going to, for when it's impossible for, for you, it's possible with him. Amen. If it's something that is impossible for you, hit the delete key, bro, that don't apply to you. Amen? Because with God, all things are possible. Father, we thank you, and we bless your name once again. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We have to look out. Let's go ahead and take our evening offering now. Let's go ahead and take our evening offering. Bible said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. With the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. So give, and God said, it shall be given back to you. It shall be given back to you. Now, he don't tell you how much, but you know what he expects of us. He expects us to give a tenth of our earnings, which is our tithe and offering. Amen. 
our tithes and offerings. And what we're doing when we do that, the Bible says in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Father, I thank you for this tithes and for this offering that is coming in today, Father. I bless this offering. I sanctify this offering, Father. Let it be used for your kingdom and for your glory. In the name that is above every name, God bless you. Amen. If you are here today, you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life. I know that you all here, you already, you all have already declared that you're born again, that you're saved. So let's just talk to those that are viewing and those maybe listening to us by the internet right now on television. Let's ask them, are they ready to make things right with God? And if you are ready to make things right with God, then right now, God is dealing with your heart. And he's calling you to prepare to go over into your promised land, to take back, to take what the enemy has kept you from. You see, there are some things over in this land, this kind of land that God prepared for the people had not they walked by faith, they never would have obtained. Amen. God wants to cause your Jericho wall to fall down flat so you can walk right into your Jericho and take back your promises, your blessings, your inheritance. Just like going over Jordan into the promised land. God's going to give you everything that belongs to you, but you have to walk it by faith and not by sight. Father, we thank you once again. Hallelujah. You here today, you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You may be listening to us right now. You never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. I'm going to give you the opportunity right now to do so. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. You died for my sin. And today, as I confess my sin, you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Father, for setting me free from the penalty of sin. If you said that simple prayer right now, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he's ministering to your heart right now. Father, I pray for everyone that said that prayer with me right now, Father. I pray, Father, for sure deliverance to enter into their heart. I pray, Father, that no weapon formed against their hearts after this day that they have released their faith for their salvation no weapon formed against them father regardless what the enemy try to say or do father you will give them the ability to rise up and say no to sin and yes to God our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we'll not give in but we will stand strong Father, we bless your people now. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now, anyone have a, a prayer request? Yes, sir. God wants you to do right now. He wants you to do what we talked about earlier. If you start taking care of that part, then everything else can start lining up. Because see, God, He wants you to see where you are before you can go where He has for you to go. You got to see where you are because you got to take care of where you are now. If you begin to take care of where you are now, then you can begin to advance to other steps. You got to take care of where you are now, okay? No, I'm not saying you have to. We'll talk about this. We'll talk about this. Father, we'll talk about this in a minute. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone under the sound of my voice, those that are viewing, those that are listening, God, I pray that you administer to each of their hearts supernaturally. Let this word they have gone forth today, let it pierce their hearts cause their understanding to become enlightened that they will see themselves walking in possessing their promises their inheritance according to your word in Jesus name amen God bless you see you on Sunday 10 a.m.